Hey guys, Ross with RV Tips and Travels. Today we are dewinterizing the RV, and this process is broken down into three general steps. First, the most obvious step is pushing all the antifreeze out of the plumbing system and switching our water heater bypass valves from winterized mode back over to normal operating mode. The second step is sanitizing the plumbing system. Now, I won't argue that this is necessary to do when you dewinterize, but this is a perfect time to do it. Sanitizing is always a part of my process and I'm a firm believer in that process. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today too. The third step involves safety, maintenance, and a couple things that your owner's manual may not mention. It sounds like a lot, but I promise it's a very simple process. And like all of our process videos, we're gonna walk you through chronologically so it's easy to follow and understand. This is the Dewinterizing Masterclass. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is reconnect your battery if you remove it over the winter. Connect your shore power, turn on the lights, and open your slides so you have access everywhere inside your RV. It's also important that your black and gray tanks are closed at this point too. Now this next step is optional. Whether you have a water heater with or without an anode rod, it's a good idea to clean out your water heater at least once a year. You can use one of these cleaning wands. It attaches to a hose and allows you to spray a high pressure jet of water inside your water heater to clean out any debris or calcium buildup. Now there is a better way to clean out your water heater and that's a method called descaling. It is a bit of a process. I'm not going to cover that process in this video because you're here to dewinterize, but I will put a link to that video down below in the video description if you wanna watch it later. After you're done cleaning out your water heater, you can go ahead and reinsert your drain plug or anode rod. This next step is a step you don't see a lot in dewinterizing videos or in owner's manuals. There's most likely some type of screen or debris filter where your water hose connects to your RV. Even if you use a water filter, it's a good idea to remove the screen to clean it off because all the water filters in the world aren't going to help if this is dirty. I'll just use some dish soap with a toothbrush or compressed air and make sure it's fully rinsed off before reinstalling. These are usually made of metal, but if you can't get it clean enough to your liking, you can always replace this screen too. You'll probably find one of these screens everywhere you can connect a hose to your RV, including the black tank flush. And while you don't necessarily need filtered water to clean your black tank, if these screens are dirty, they will restrict water flow. And when you're using your black tank flush, you want the highest pressure that your RV plumbing will allow. So go around your RV, everywhere you see a water hose connection, you'll probably find one of these screens and now's a good time to go ahead and clean those out. Next, go ahead and open your fresh water tank drain. Now you may see a little bit of water come out of that drain. The reason this is happening, even if you winterize with compressed air, you're never truly getting all of the water out of your lines. There's still gonna be a small amount in there. It's not big enough to expand and cause any damage but over time it will eventually pull up at the lowest point via gravity and that's what you're seeing when you open your fresh water tank drain. Next you wanna set your connection panel switches over to the fresh tank fill, connect the hose and turn on the water. Since the fresh tank water drain is open, you're going to see water come out of the bottom of that fresh tank. The reason I do this is just to push out any old or stagnant water that may be left in that line between your connection panel and your fresh water tank. Since some owner's manuals tell you not to switch your valves under pressure, go ahead and shut your water off, switch your connection panel over to city water, turn the water back on, go inside and open just one faucet. Let the water run for about one minute and just like we did with the fresh tank fill, this is a process that gets any old or stagnant water out from the connection panel through your city water connection lines. You can turn that faucet off and you don't need to run water through the other faucets at this point in time. So why do I do these two steps? When we sanitize the fresh water system, which we're going to do in just about a minute, that sanitizing process starts at the fresh water tank, which means we are only sanitizing everything from the fresh water tank and after. These lines are before the fresh water tank. So that's why I push water through just to get all the old and stagnant water out of those lines. Okay, just like the fresh tank fill line and the city water connection line, there's one more line in your RV that won't be affected when we sanitize and flush. If your RV is set up with an antifreeze hose connected to the water pump, there still may be antifreeze in this hose and resting against the backside of this three-way valve from when you winterized. Check to make sure your valve is pointed towards the antifreeze hose and not the line from the fresh tank so you are drawing water 
through the antifreeze hose. Simply grab a bucket of water, put the antifreeze hose in the bucket, turn on the water pump, and let the new water push the antifreeze through the valve, through the pump, and out to just one faucet. You'll only need to run fresh water through one faucet at this point in time because the purpose is just to get the antifreeze out and the water pushed through the water pump and away from that three-way valve. Now you can turn off the water pump. Aside from the health aspect, I recommend doing this flush so you don't have any antifreeze leaking out of this hose and onto the floor. Ask me how I know. It's important to understand that these three lines are not affected during standard dewinterization and sanitizing processes. Go ahead and turn your winterizing hose valve back over so water starts drawing from the fresh water tank moving forward. The next couple of steps will involve pushing antifreeze out of the lines if you winterized with antifreeze and also sanitizing the entire plumbing system regardless of what winterizing process you used. Now I want to mention quickly before we start that process, you do not want to run sanitizing solution into your water heater. Your water heater tank is made of metal. The sanitizing solution contains bleach and bleach can be corrosive to metal. We also don't want to run the sanitizing solution into the toilet and I'll explain that reasoning a little bit later. So because we don't want to run our sanitizing solution into the water heater, we need to make sure that our water heater bypass valves are still in winterized mode. If you aren't sure, now is the time to check because you never want to introduce bleach into your water heater. If you have a complex connection panel like the Nautilus system, all you have to do is simply switch your valves over to winterize mode. If you have a standard or a simple panel, your water heater bypass valves are probably at your water heater and you most likely have a two valve or a three valve setup. If you have a two valve setup, you'll want both of these valve handles to be pointing in the direction of the line that they are on. This means flow is never directed into the water heater. If you have a three valve setup, you'll want each hot and cold valve that is connected to a line going into the water heater to be perpendicular with the line that it's on, which means it's closed and flow is never directed into or out of the water heater. You'll also need the valve in the middle on the crossover line to be open or parallel with the line that it's on. This crossover line allows cold water to flow back over to the hot sides so when we sanitize the plumbing system, we hit both the cold and the hot faucets. If you wanna learn more about bypass valves, I posted an instructional video not too long ago that details how bypass valves work and why they're needed. I'll put a link to that video down in the video description below. So regardless of the connection panel that you have, or some people call it a wet bay, you wanna make sure that your bypass valves are still in winterized mode. Once you know you are in winterized mode, we can now create and introduce our sanitizing solution. I'd like to take a quick second and thank the folks at BowShield for sponsoring this video. BowShield T9 is a dual purpose waterproof lubricant and rust preventative that is safe on metal, rubber, plastic, paint, and fiberglass. It cleans, lubricates, and dries to a wax coating that protects the components on your RV. I'll put links to their products down below in the video description. Sanitizing is just a process that kills bacteria, germs, and odors that may build up in your tanks and your lines over time. Now there are sanitizing solutions that you can purchase, but I think it's safe to say most RVers will use a simple solution containing bleach diluted in water. While the ratios may vary depending on where you look, a diluted bleach solution is what most RV manufacturers will recommend to sanitize and disinfect your lines, and it's completely safe for your plumbing system. First, make sure you are using an unscented chlorine bleach, free from dyes and perfumes. Second, you're going to need to know your fresh water tank capacity because we're going to be making a solution that is dependent on the size of your fresh water tank. It's equally important to check manufacturer recommendations on specialty and aftermarket equipment like washing machines or tankless water heaters before you introduce bleach. My fresh water tank capacity is 52 gallons, so we're going to use that number for our demonstration today. The mixture I have used over the years is right out of the Grand Designs owner's manual, and it calls for two ounces of bleach for every 15 gallons of fresh water tank capacity. We can simplify that ratio down to one ounce for every 7.5 gallons of fresh water tank capacity. 7.5 is the magic number, write that down. Simply take your fresh water tank capacity in gallons, divide it by 7.5, 
and that number will tell you how many ounces of bleach you will need to make your sanitizing solution. For me, 52 divided by 7.5 is 6.93. Let's call it seven ounces of bleach for the solution for my RV. Now that you know the ratio, you need to get that solution into your fresh water tank. However, the lines going into your fresh water tank are either made of PEX, plastic, rubber, or other materials that could be damaged by pure bleach. So the proper way to add bleach into your fresh water tank is to also dilute that in water first. One gallon of water for every two ounces of bleach you'll need is a good mixture that won't damage your plumbing lines. I need seven ounces of bleach, so I'm going to dilute that into about three and a half gallons of water and then pour that into the fresh water tank. Next, fill up the fresh water tank to capacity to complete the sanitizing solution. Turn on your water pump and run water through every faucet and spray port until you smell bleach coming through that faucet. Make sure as you're running the sanitizing solution through each faucet, you do the hot side, close the hot side, and then do the cold side. They have to be done separately. We're going to be adding black tank treatment to our black tank, and those treatments have enzymes and chemicals that break down human waste. Bleach is known to kill those enzymes, so we don't want to run our sanitizing solution through the toilet into the black tank. After you've done all your faucets, go ahead and crack open for just a second your low point drains to get the antifreeze out of there and the solution in. You can go ahead and turn your water pump off and now we want to let that sanitizing solution sit in the fresh water tank and the plumbing lines for four to eight hours. While the sanitizing solution is sitting in the tank and lines, now is a good time to tackle some of the safety and maintenance items that I talked about at the beginning of the video. Now your owner's manual will lay out maintenance schedules and this is a perfect time to start knocking those things out, but I'm not going to cover those specifically because this is a dewinterizing video, not a maintenance video. Instead, I'd like to show you guys some of the things that I do that aren't necessarily straightforward maintenance items, but should be considered when you're dewinterizing a camper. This is a good time to replace the batteries in your smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. Check the light on the propane or gas detector to make sure it's also operating. I'll also shine a flashlight along the floor and behind cabinets. This is a good practice to find any evidence of mice or other animals that may have made their way into the RV. A flashlight will also reflect light off of water in dark, hard to see areas. So you can check to see if there was any leaks over the winter. If your hitch has grease fittings, that may not be mentioned in an RV owner's manual. So I'll hit these at this point too. Open all your emergency exit windows to confirm there was no warping from water leaks or corrosion as well. With the warm weather coming, now is a good time to clean your interior air conditioner filter. This is probably mentioned in your owner's manual, but it is very important and now is a good time to go up on the roof and check for any damage on your roof that could have occurred over the winter. Before you head out on the road, you wanna replenish all of your first aid kits as well. Tire inspection is important throughout the camping season, but now is a good time to thoroughly inspect each tire by looking for cracks, flat spots, bubbles, uneven wear, and finish off by checking the tire pressure. Another area that may not be common or mentioned in your RV owner's manual is behind your fridge. These panels are usually vented enough for bugs to get in. So I'll always remove these vents and make sure everything looks okay behind the refrigerator. Now I can only show you these miscellaneous items that I do for my camper based on my experience and my camper. So if there's something different that you guys do upon dewinterizing, please put it down in the comments section below so everyone has access to as much information as possible. Okay, we're in the home stretch. It's been eight hours, so you can go ahead and open your fresh water tank drain and drain out the sanitizing solution. If children or pets frequent this area, you may want to consider where you're dumping this solution. Now this is a heavily diluted solution, so it's ultimately your decision, but it is worth mentioning. After the tank is empty, go ahead, turn on your water pump, open your faucets and drain out the solution into your waste tanks. Once the solution is out of the lines, you can go ahead and turn off your water pump. Don't forget to open your low point drains to get the solution out of there as well. At this time, you'll wanna fill your fresh tank with fresh water, turn on your water pump and run clean water through all of the faucets until you no longer smell bleach coming through that faucet. And there's nothing wrong with repeating this step with a second tank of fresh water if you want. While you're running the solution out and fresh water in, just be mindful of how much water you're putting in your waste tanks. Don't forget you'll have to drain your waste tanks when we're done with the dewinterization process. Okay, so now we're done with sanitizing the fresh water system. The next step is to turn your water heater bypass valves back over to normal use mode. On a two valve system, turn both of the valve handles towards the water heater. On a three valve system, turn the inner crossover valve perpendicular to the line it's on, 
and the hot and cold valves will need to be open or parallel to the lines they are on. Okay, so this next thing that I do is not crucial to dewinterizing, but something you can do at this point in time is go ahead and put about five gallons of water in your black tank. Remember, you should always be keeping water in your black tank and then go ahead and put your black tank treatment in. I'd like to again thank Bowshield for sponsoring this video. I highly recommend their products to maintain and protect the components on your RV. So much in fact, I bought two cases of T9 so I don't run out for a while. They have different products for a host of applications, including your RV, your vehicles, your home, and your tools to name a few. You can see their entire product line at bowshield.com. If you enjoyed the video, we hope you consider hitting that like button down below and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy camping everyone. See you soon.